What's going on guys? Welcome back. We'll go back to another video. In today's video, we have another mod for the 435. And before we actually get into this build of the car, let's go ahead and shoot that intro that you guys love. Yeah, I can never ever find the right words. And there's no way this is real life. There's no telling you. So welcome back. All right guys, so we do have a mod for the 435, which is pretty much a differential support. I pretty much have built this car ground up. I don't think it's missing one single thing other than like upgrading turbos and stuff like that, like crazy things like that. But other than that, I feel like this car has pretty much gotten every single mod on the market onto it, which is pretty insane. But the only thing I saw online that this car doesn't have will be the dip support. It's something you would need whenever you go out drifting or if you want to do like launch control or you love like going burnouts, drag strips, all this stuff, they putting a lot of strain on the differential, zero to 60s, all this stuff. Whenever you guys bash it from a green light, basically whenever you guys are coming from a complete stop and you guys are gunning it, or like, again, launch control, any of that stuff, you guys are putting strain on the diff. Whenever you're drifting it, whatnot, you are putting strain. So I went ahead and picked up one of these little diff support guys for the 435. This is from Burger Tuning. It should be a pretty easy install. We'll go ahead and figure that out and um, take it out for a quick little spin. I don't think you're gonna feel a difference. It's just the support. It's kind of like putting on a charge pipe, one of those kind of things. So you guys don't end up having some significant damage because you know you don't you don't want your diff blowing out in the middle of a drag race or whatever because that'd be pretty bad. So taking a look inside again, this is from Burger Tuning. Just gonna take this out. So we got all the bolts here. We got a ton of bolts. All right, well gonna have to figure that out. And then we got the plate in here. Okay, alrighty, that should be everything. Put all that back in the box. So yeah, here's a little diff support. It is some seriously high quality. It's made out of steel, and uh, these bolts right here are also made of stainless steel hardware. So this is like top of the line quality. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and just jack up the 435, see where this thing gets mounted, and see where we gotta drill our holes and install this bad boy. All right guys, now that we got the car jacked up, let's go ahead and see where this little guy gets mounted. And then we get the bolts in a little bit. All right guys, so I do believe it gets mounted just like that. So it looks like we're gonna have to drill in two holes up here. And then we're also gonna have to remove this bolt right here and this bolt right here and use the bolts that come with the kit. All right guys, let's just put the car back down. We need some drill bits and a new sock. If it's either a T55 or a T60, I'll go ahead and purchase it, figure it out, and let you guys know in a bit. So we're heading out to Harbor Freight, picking up all the tools we need. I think it's gonna be under $30. Uh, let's hope so. So we just got out of Harbor Freight. I went ahead and got one of these. I never ever had one of these and they were $20, they're on sale. So I decided, you know what, let me get one of these. It will help out a lot. At the same time, uh, I have the T50, but I don't have a T55 or T60. So I just went ahead and just got the whole set. I think it was like $11. And this is on sale for $10, 30 piece drill bit. This is the black oxide one. So it should be able to handle more heat. So I'm happy with this. And then I picked up some glasses so no, nothing gets in my eye. So I went and pretty much got a couple luxuries. You don't have to have this. These are the only two things you really need. Probably cost you 20 bucks end of the day. And this is just in general, guys. If you guys are doing any repairs or installations, you will need Chipotle as well. It's a must. The amount of times that I promote Chipotle is ridiculous. They need to sponsor my videos. Any of that's at home. All right, guys, got my little creeper. That's what apparently what it's called. I went ahead and also got the T, I think it's a T55, those bolts that are on the diff. We're gonna go ahead and hook that up to a ratchet, and then we have finally all of our head. We're just gonna go ahead and pick the right one that's perfect with this screw right here. But with how drilling works, you can't just use the biggest one. You kind of have to work your way up. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some medium, uh, a small one to just drill a hole, and then some medium ones, and then a super massive one in the end, but uh, should be good. Don't forget your safety goggles, boys. Oh, this is so nice. <laughs> okay, okay, let, uh, let's focus, let's focus. So we got our T55. Let's go ahead and just get those two bolts out of the bottom diff. All right, guys, once you have these two bolts out, you're pretty much ready to go ahead and line up the plate. So let's go ahead and get that plate set up right here. The bolts come with the spacer, so we are gonna be needing the spacer. You basically put in the bolt like that. Perfect. Same to the other side. Bada bang, bada bang. Line those up. 
I'm just going and hand tying it for now. Woo, this angle. <laughs> oh man, I miss I miss having the lift, guys. All right, now I haven't 100% tightened these two bolts, but it pretty much gives me a rough estimate to where this is gonna line up. So we're gonna go ahead and just pretty much start either drilling. I'm probably gonna start marking it. Let me go ahead and mark it on both sides and then we can pretty much start drilling. I might even take this plate off just so we can do the drilling and we don't actually damage the plate itself. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and take out these two bolts now from the bottom here and uh, we can go ahead and remove the diff support and go ahead and just drill on our two screws into the subframe. Should be quite easy, so uh, hope it is. Uh, let's go ahead and put this off to the side and uh, go ahead and get our drill. We do have our two holes marked up right there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, we have that drawn out and we have that drawn out. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just drill those two holes. All right guys, so we're going with the slightly bigger drill bit now. So uh, let's go ahead and just drill again and uh, just try to make that hole even bigger and hopefully we can get up to the top as well because we're trying to get to the, we're trying to screw out from the bottom and the top so we can put the lug nut on the top as well. All right guys, now that I've drilled out both holes from top to bottom, we are now able to put our screws in there. So if you guys see it, put my screw in here and it should go out the other way, just like that. So as, if your screw can go in all the way, that's when you know you drilled it all the way. I recommend a drill that the head is pretty big to fit the bigger ones. Um, if you don't have a drill that actually can hold the bigger drill bit, uh, make sure your drill bits, it gets skinnier in the bottom just so you guys can go with a thicker, thicker head. It just makes the job 20 million times easier. I went ahead and borrowed my friends over there, uh, right over there, and uh, that one did the trick perfectly. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, mount this diff support. Should be pretty easy. Just like that guys, we have our diff support in place, the two bolts here. Make sure these things are not moving. So yeah, this is a little loose, so we just have to make sure we tighten it just as much as this one. We'll make sure nothing moves here. And uh, bada bing, bada bang, we got ourselves a diff support over here. I don't know why, it's something about when I build a car, I wanna try to do everything to it, uh, just so down the road I'll never regret not doing something. This mod's only like $100 or like $120. And if you think about it, it saves you a lot of money because the guy that purchased my M3, I don't know if you guys know, but the guy that purchased my M3, um, he ended up putting it up for sale again. I noticed it, I DM'd him, I asked him questions about the car. Um, he told me that the dip blew out of the car he was doing uh, like pretty much a launch or like some kind of like burnout or whatever and the diff literally just blew out and fell on the ground when you guys push your car that far your diff needs support and that's why this brace is important it's only 120 dollars guys it's nothing crazy it's kind of like a charge pipe when you push major boost you're gonna crack something so well worth the 120 dollars for sure super happy even looks super good just take a look at that that looks freaking awesome i love that okay cool 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 so now that that's inside i'm gonna go ahead and clean up and then uh catch you guys in a little bit i got the diff support on the car so the car as it sits today is pretty much a hundred percent modified i can't really think of one thing this car doesn't have which is absolutely insane to me i know behind the m4 seats you could get some carbon fiber stuff but that's because it's m4 seats not because it's a 435 um, this car is absolutely filthy. But yeah, guys, as it sits, I'm absolutely in love with this car. The only issue with this car right now is this stupid airlift controller. The airlift controller decided to want it to give out on me so the controller doesn't work. I have to control it from my phone, which is still cool, but I do like that controller actually working. So uh, I might have to order another one. It was like $400, which is just super unfortunate. But yeah, guys, super happy with this car, but something just came up that I completely forgot about. We have smog. Yes, we have smog. So we're gonna have to actually remove the, the high flow cats from this car. We're gonna need to remove the intake. Let me know if there's a carb sticker for the MST intake. I'm not really too sure, but if there is, I can just throw on a sticker on there and I should be good to go. From the top end, everything looks pretty OEM, which is great. That charge pipe back there is an aluminum one, um, but I mean, I don't think that's gonna be too big of an issue. I think we should be good on that. Um, as for this cooler, I don't know, can you get dinged for having an upgraded cooler when it comes to smog? I have no idea. And also, can you get dinged for having an aftermarket cap? I mean, no idea. So let me know, guys, because I, I have a few questions about that. 
As for the high flow cats, it is throwing a check engine light. So, I did detune the car uh, to see if that check engine light would come back on for smog, and it did, unfortunately. So, we are going to have to actually remove the high flow cats for smog. If you guys live in California, this is something you guys have to deal with. I know you guys could go through other methods to smog the car, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to do any of those little shady things. I just want to, I want to smog the car properly, have proper paperwork for the car. Because, again, I have some plants coming up, guys. Um, I'm actually going to be addressing in a probably... A bit and probably really soon to be honest we are gonna be taking this down to showman motors uh, to actually help me get the cat uninstalled because I, I, I do need a lift absolutely so he's gonna go ahead and help us out I think it's gonna be either Monday or Tuesday he's gonna help us out you guys gonna be seeing this Friday so pretty close we do need to also work on the valve cover for the fourth the 135 that's coming in I believe on Monday so Monday we got to do the valve cover job hopefully that goes according to plan and then every single gasket on that car should be perfect and then as for this car we remove the high flow cats I'm showing you guys some cars that uh, Showman Motor has at his dealer's lot and look for some potential builds because he's a lot of different BMW and I want you guys to kind of let me know what you guys are kind of leaning towards so we're gonna head to the dealership Hopefully on Tuesday check it out check out all the cars Let me know what you guys want to see from there But as for today guys, we got the mod in the car and I don't really have much more planned right now But it is good. We're gonna have to remove a bunch of things for smog pretty soon So probably in an upcoming video I never kept the car long enough that I actually need to re-smog which is kind of insane So well, I mean I technically have to smog in about two months, but I mean, still trying to get it out of the way. Ah, I mean, my little handy dandy chair chilling next to the 435. Now I'm gonna be mentioning something a lot of you guys are uh, pretty upset with, which is the fact that I promised I'm gonna try to do an 800 horsepower build. Well, I made one video on that, but I promised to make the 135 a trap build on the channel. And uh, yeah, that is absolutely my fault. I'm gonna take 100% responsibility for saying that I shouldn't have said something that I actually wasn't gonna do. That's the only thing that I've said on the channel that I wasn't gonna do. To get that cleared up, I actually didn't intend on selling the car. Believe it or not, that's a car I actually intended on making a track build. Why do you guys think I did the oil pan? Why do you guys think I went through all that work? Why do you guys think I upgraded the brakes and a whole bunch of stuff? I didn't do all that stuff so I could sell the car. I'm not gonna get a penny for that. I went through a lot of work to do all that stuff. I even inserted the pulley guard. I did all that stuff. That's all preventative stuff for track use. I did all that stuff so I can enjoy the car on the track. You guys can see my intentions were there, but things came up in life and I hope you guys respect that. I have, you know, a lot of things are happening December. And again, if you guys can't bear with me, then, you know, I'm sorry. But at the same time, I got to do what works best for me and for you guys, not just for you guys. I have to, you guys have to work with me the same I'm working with you guys. I'm trying to bring as much content as possible. It's putting a huge dent in my wallet. It's not cheap. Doing a track build and it absolutely getting demolished on the track could absolutely ruin my finances. And I cannot afford that, especially for the things coming up in December. So for those of you guys who can respect that, make sure to smash that like button and make sure to show your man some love because I've been getting a lot of hate and I don't know why honestly like I'm working with you guys just work with me I mean also seeing a lot of comments with the 650i so that car was an incomplete build probably the only build on this channel is incomplete and I know this could be a lot of controversy but I mean if you guys say the 135 is incomplete no it is more than complete you guys can say it hasn't been complete it everything has pretty much been done to it other than a single turbo at this point the 435 it's been built beyond built it's been built literally to an, almost an M4 status at this point the E92 M3 has been built from the ground up the, the 335 that I had the 5050 was built from the ground up the 330i i had i've done every single retrofit possible to that car i built my cars all the way the 650i we ended up wrapping and we fixed all the lights on the dash we got the car smogged past it was in an accident we repaired everything custom steering wheel a bunch of cool little things but we ended up not 100 finishing the build with a couple more mods a couple more retrofits because i had to make room for the f10 um when i sold that 650i i didn't have a 135 and i didn't have an f10 when i sold that car i made room for the f10 and the 135 so when i'm selling cars guys i got an opportunity for a good price all the cars come and go this is reality this is what a rebuild channel is all about you try to get as much bills on the channel rebuild it, bring it back to life, hashtag 7 BMW, and then you move on and you get something bigger and better. I think that's what a true enthusiast is, is to experiment and to just enjoy a whole bunch of different cars, not just sticking to one car. But anyway, guys, that pretty much concludes this video. I don't want to drag this out any longer. I will be coming up with more of an updated video what's going on with all my cars pretty soon here, probably on Wednesday, because again, a lot of things are happening Monday, Tuesday, and throughout the weekend, so stay tuned, guys. Huge things are coming, huge, insane rebuild coming to the channel as well. But without further ado, guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Yeah, yeah, let's go. I ain't the first with the curse, with the thirst that I wanna be better, not worse. Man, it hurts. I'm on this earth with my words, and I put them all together in cause I wanna have worth.